So um, my name is uh, George uh, Papadimitriou, and I'm a second year PhD student at the SciTech Group. Um, and today's presentation uh, is based on our uh, research project called uh, Panorama 360. And um, this presentation is structured uh, by giving an overview on uh, the project uh, and what its goals are. And then um, I'm going to present uh, the tools we're using for monitoring. Um, uh, I'm going to talk about also the repository that we have, and we store data from uh, our experimental runs. And uh, also, I'm going to show uh, how uh, you can deploy uh, this infrastructure uh, locally uh, on your end. <clears throat> so, um, uh, Panorama 360. Uh, is a, a research project uh, in collaboration between uh, USC ISI, uh, RENSI, uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory, uh, Rensselaer, and the Berkeley Lab. George, you're not sharing right now. Oh, I'm not. Oh. How it got turned off. Okay. How about now? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Something happened with the recording. Okay. It's still on? Yes. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Panorama 360 is a, a collaboration between uh, UCB Turby, Renzi, Oak Ridge uh, National Laboratory, uh, Rensselaer, and the Berkeley Lab. And as, uh, as its goals um, uh, are using Pegasus as a, as a workflow management system, to execute workflows, uh, also collect data based on Pegasus, characterize the performance uh, on uh, of applications, uh, create a common repository, provide machine learning techniques uh, for workflow performance analysis and infrastructure troubleshooting, and also at the end of of, uh, of the project, we want to provide best practice. But uh, as I said, today's uh, presentation is focusing uh, on the uh, resource users uh, tools. Uh, sorry, research user capture tools that we have, and their repository design. So, um, some disclaimers here uh, before I, before I continue. Um, this this branch is experimental, and all our work that we're doing uh, is contained within uh, the Panorama branch of Pegasus. And right now, um, only the Stampede functionality for publishing uh, data. Uh, has found its way uh, to the main uh, master uh, Pegasus runs. Uh, so, um, why we're branding this as a end-to-end -end, uh, uh, monitoring? So, end-to-end -end monitoring. Uh, what we want, what we want to say with that is that we're getting data from the workflow, and we're using Snapbit for that. So we're we're tracking the status of the workflow. Uh, as it progresses. Um, we're also tracking uh, the, the task uh, as it executes. So we're getting user, uh, resource user traces uh, with a frequency uh, as low as one second. Uh, we're also getting data from the file system uh, by using Darsen. And we're also collecting data with Globus uh, from the Globus transfer service. So by doing that, we have uh, um, a complete uh, overview of the workflow as it executes. Uh, and um, right now, uh, we are just focusing on these tools. We, we are limited on the, on the number of tools we're using. So for example, we don't collect data from uh, uh, SCP or other file transfer protocols. Uh, and for uh, we, we don't support any other uh, IO uh, profiling tools, only DARS. So, <clears throat> um, the Pegasus Kickstart, you may, you may be familiar with it, because uh, it's uh, been uh, a wrapper script that also belongs to the main uh, um, Pegasus branch. Uh, but in the, in the Panorama branch, uh, it has been um, extended with uh, extra functionality. So, it now supports uh, fine-grained monitoring capabilities, by invoking a helper tool called Pegasus Monitor, uh, which uh, it pulls resource user statistics from the workflow running tasks uh, with a predefined time interval. So this 
this time interval uh, can be as low as one second, and the maximum value of that uh, can be one day. <clears throat> I don't think that's uh, very um, useful. So um, Pegasus uh, Monitor, uh, it uses the slash proc entry of your, of your running task, and among the, like, um, uh, the resource user uh, uh, attributes that it collects, you can find number of processes and threads, uh, the time spent on system and user space, uh, bytes read and written, and the IO weight. So you can find an example of, uh, of the collected attributes on the right side of this slide. And as you can see, it's in JSON format. <clears throat> uh, Darson, on the other hand, is, the HPC, is an HPC lightweight uh, application level IO profiling tool uh, that captures statistics on the behavior of HPC uh, IO operations. So uh, it collects data um, that <clears throat> include uh, the file opened uh, by the application, uh, the IO operation counts, common IO exercises, and cumulative timers. And it has support for POSIX IO, MPI IO, HDF5, and the parallel net CDF uh, layers. Uh, it also provides some uh, job level characteristics, such as number of application processes, uh, and the jobs uh, start and end times, uh, the job unique identification provided by the scheduler, and all of that is supported only for MPI applications. So in Panorama, we're exposing uh, only a subset of this information, uh, and we are, we are exposing the accumulated performance data from the STDIO and POSIX mode. <clears throat> so also, uh, the type of document that we provide here is in JSON format. And you can find extra uh, information about Darson uh, in, its, uh, web, in, in its own web page. Uh, next on, we have Globus. <clears throat> Globus is a research data management service uh, built on top of Grid FTP. And it can be used to transfer files for your own computations or share files with the community. Uh, and for every transfer, uh, Globus creates uh, transfer logs containing uh, statistics uh, such as uh, the time requested of the transfer, uh, the completion time of the transfer, the source and destination, the transfer rate, and the number of failures. So uh, again, the type of document here is in JSON format. <clears throat> uh, and um, it's useful to have this because uh, Pegasus transfer as a tool, it's, uh, it's using Globus to do the transfer. Uh, but because Globus is a service, it doesn't know exactly what, uh, what was the transfer speed or when did the actual transfer start. Because after the request, uh, the Globus service might wait a while or queue up the, the transfer. So this provides um, more accurate uh, statistics for you. <clears throat> so, okay. Um, all of these uh, tools were um, were in exist before, uh, but they had some. We had some issues uh, down the way. Um, so first of all, um, all of the resources are scattered across multiple locations. For example, the execution side, uh, cloud services, and Pegasus logs, and they they weren't containing uh, metadata about the the workflow. So it was very hard to locate and match them in the future. And on top of that, they weren't in a common format. So for example, Kickstart logs were in XML, the Stampede events were provided in JSON, Kickstart online logs were in JSON, Globus logs uh, were in JSON, and Darson logs were in binary format. So uh, what we did was uh, to come up with uh, a data collection architecture that had Pegasus in its center. Uh, and apart from uh, running and, uh, the workflow, it was also orchestrating uh, the data collection. <clears throat> so uh, this architecture uh, has a message queuing system to decouple publishers from the data store. Um, and it also has a, a flexible search and visualization engine uh, on its bucket. Uh, on its full uh, uh, view, you can find our actual architecture here. So you can you can separate uh, the architecture in five entities, 
And the first one is uh, Pegasus that plans and runs the workflow. Uh, then we have uh, the monitoring tools that we're using. Um, Pegasus Monitor D, Globus Logs, uh, Darson Logs, Tickster Monitoring Events. Um, and the third entity we have is the Message Broker, which in our case is RabbitMQ. Uh, the fourth entity is the Data Processing Pipeline, which in our case is uh, Logstas. And then after that, we have the search and visualization engines, um, which uh, in our case um, are Kibana and Elastic. So uh, <clears throat> in order to provide this functionality, we have to extend some of uh, the tools uh, already existing in, in Pegasus, and also we added a couple more. So uh, Pegasus Monitor D was extended with support for JSON and publishing events to an MQP endpoint. Uh, Pegasus Transfer uh, was extended to support Globus uh, transfers and collect data from, its, from the Globus service and publish them to an MQP endpoint. Uh, and we added a new tool called Pegasus Darsen, which uh, acts uh, as a parser, um, as a wrapper, sorry, on top of the da uh, data, uh, of, on top of the Darsen parser. Uh, and it translates the binary format of uh, the Darsen logs to JSON format. So, as I said, um, we also provide our own uh, visualization uh, tool, and we have created a custom workflow uh, Ibana plugin, which we call uh, Panorama 360 plugin. And uh, this provides uh, a representation of the DAG and also gives um, general information about uh, the workflow. For example, um, what was the workflow label, the workflow ID, start time, um, and it doesn't stop there. It goes down to job level, and it will also give you uh, job-specific um, um, statistics. For example, uh, you have the max span of the job, uh, you have the average CPU utilization, uh, it also uh, collects the bytes read and written, and it also presents <clears throat> the number of compute threads the job uh, used. Um, so, uh, our repository is organized in, uh, in three indexes. Uh, so the first index is called panorama underscore transfer, and it contains globus logs. Uh, the second index is called panorama underscore kickstart, and it contains the Pegasus kickstart online traces. And the third index is called panorama underscore stop feed, and contains workflow events and Darson logs. So uh, the third index contains Darson logs as well, because we're using a generic way to um, publish them. And I'll explain more about that uh, down the road. Uh, you can find uh, examples of our data uh, to, to two uh, open access endpoints that we have. Uh, the first one is the Elasticsearch endpoint, and the second one is the Kibana endpoint. Uh, the Elasticsearch endpoint uh, is on data.panorama.si.edu and it's only accessible via um, clients. For example, you can use the Elasticsearch Python client to access uh, the indexes. Uh, but the kibana.panorama.si.edu but the endpoint is accessible um, through, the through, through a web client. For example, Firefox, Chrome, or Internet Explorer. <clears throat> So let me give you a quick uh, overview of the Kibana uh, plugin that we have. So uh, on Kibana, you have two tabs. One is called Discover. And on this tab, you can find uh, raw data that are pushed to the Elasticsearch that the Kibana is connected to. So, On the, on, the, on the top uh, left corner, we have three indexes, and you can select between Kickstart, Stampede, and Transfer. So if I if I choose Transfer, I can see tra transfer statistics for my workflows, and um, these are connected to to, to a workflow um, by adding extra metadata, uh, such as the workflow ID 
and uh, the job uh, label. And that's how we correlate the two uh, to our actual workflow. Um, the next thing I would like to show is the Panorama 360 plugin, which presents uh, a list uh, of uh, the 100 latest workflows that we, we have run. And by clicking on one, you can you can you can see uh, an interactive DAG and also statistics for the workflow. <clears throat> so um, on the right side here, uh, you can see uh, the workflow label, the workflow ID, start time and end time, and also the make span of the workflow. Uh, and if you select for example, on a transfer uh, on a transfer job, you will also see duration of a transfer. Uh, and if you go down to job level, you will also see the average transfer rate of a job uh, and the bytes transferred on the steps uh, taken by Globus. Uh, on the other side, if you go to a computational uh, task on a job level, you'll you'll find uh, average CPU utilization, uh, its make span, the bytes read and written by, by this job, and also the number of threads used by, by, the, by the actual task. <clears throat> okay. So, how do you deploy this um, on your own infrastructure? Uh, first of all, we have some prerequisites here. Um, the first one is, is the HD Condor and Pegasus. So uh, HD Condor and Pegasus should be used uh, on your submit node. And you can find pre-compiled uh, versions of the Pegasus Panorama brands uh, on our download page. And you can also build it from source. Um, for the actual backend, that uses uh, RabbitMQ, Logstas, uh, Kibana, and Elasticsearch. Uh, we have dependencies on Docker and Docker Compose, and that's because we have uh, bundled um, the entire backend uh, in a Docker Compose script, so you can bring it up uh, with one command. <clears throat> so, uh, how do we create our backend, uh, our monitoring backend. Uh, on a host that has Docker and Docker Compose, uh, we can clone the GitHub, uh, from github.com, uh, the data collection arc uh, repository. Uh, and it's very simple to bring up the containers by using the Docker Compose uh, app that's demonize command. And if everything goes well, uh, you should see an output uh, as in the example below. So uh, this script will bring up uh, RabbitMQ, Elasticsearch, Kibana, and Logstas. And for Elasticsearch uh, and RabbitMQ, it will use volumes, so it will make your data persistent. If you bring down the containers and bring them back up, uh, the data will be there, so and they will be accessible to you. <clears throat> these services are running uh, on their own ports, uh, and we're exposing these services to the host machine. So RabbitMQ is running on port 15672. Uh, Elasticsearch is running on port 9200. Logstas is running on port 9600. And Kibana is running on port 5601. And you can actually check the services by accessing uh, these URLs. So if you have a regular workflow configured, what you need to do in order to um, enable uh, our monitoring on the workflow uh, is basically um, enabling profiles in Pegasus. Uh, so for the Stampede events, uh, what we need to, to, to add to our workflow uh, metadata and workflow specification uh, is three properties in the uh, Pegasus properties file. So 
um, first of all, we have to add the pegasus.monitord.encoding equals JSON. And this will notify Pegasus Monitor-D that it will have to create JSON output. Uh, and the second uh, property is pegasus.catalog.workflow.amqp.url, uh, which specifies the AMQP endpoint that the Pegasus Monitor-D will uh, connect to and publish uh, the Stampede events. Uh, the, the third property <coughs> is called pegasus.catalog.workflow.amqp.events. Uh, and here we're using a wildcard, uh, stampede.asterisk. And this uh, tells uh, Pegasus Monitor to publish all its events. If you wanted to narrow down the events published uh, from Pegasus Monitor D, uh, you can specify a different wild, um, filter here or multiple filters. And you can find more about that on our Stampede uh, events documentation, which is uh, the link uh, down on this slide. <clears throat> so for the transfer events, uh, Pegasus transfer uh, needs uh, access to two profiles. Uh, the first profile is called Pegasus underscore transfer underscore publish, and this should be set to one. And it's actually an environmental variable passed to the transfer job that tells Pegasus transfer that it has to publish uh, to an MQP endpoint. Uh, and the second uh, pr uh, profile that needs to be uh, specified here is called uh, Pegasus underscore AMQP underscore URL, which uh, tells Pegasus transfer, which is the AMQP endpoint that it needs to connect to and publish the statistics. Um, if the publishing fails for one or the other reason, for example, uh, you cannot access the global service or you cannot uh, access the endpoint, uh, the transfer doesn't fail, uh, it will still be successful. Uh, and it will just skip the publishing step. So an example of, of this can be found uh, down below. And we specify uh, these profiles in our site catalog. Um, so the site under which uh, these profiles should be specified uh, is usually the site that uh, Pegasus transfer will uh, run on. And in this case, it's uh, specified as the local site because um, Globus uh, transfer, uh, transfers are usually instantiated by the submit node. Um, then, in order to enable the Kickstarter online traces, you have to specify two profiles uh, in the sites catalog of your workflow. Uh, the first profile is called uh, pegasus.gridchart.arguments, uh, uh, and this should be set to uh, das m and then the interval in seconds. So DASM uh, is the, the flag that enables uh, Pegasus Monitor um, from Pegasus Kickstart, and it will pull over the slash frog for um, resource users um, of your task. This, the second uh, profile that we need to specify here is called kickstart underscore monitor underscore URL, and this uh, instructs Kickstart to which RabbitMQ endpoint uh, we want to publish our events. So this endpoint um, looks different than the previous ones, and that's because we're using the actual API, sorry, the actual REST API of um, RabbitMQ in order to publish these statistics. We're not connecting via client. <clears throat> so an example of this can be found below. And I have specified these profiles under my compute uh, compute side, which in my case, it was just a counter pool. So um, by adding gridsert.arguments uh, under, the, under the compute side, this will apply to all of your compute jobs. Uh, but if you want to have um, more um, control over the interval you're using for each individual job, you can specify the same profile in your transformation catalog under each job. So you can have one job that, um, that you get data every five seconds, and you can have other jobs that get data every 10 seconds, not having all of them getting data every 10 seconds. 
um, but the previous configuration only works if we have kickstart wrapping our jobs. Uh, for MPI tasks, usually we don't wrap, wrap them with uh, Pegasus Kickstart. And for, for this, we're using a, a workaround in order to collect traces. Uh, so we're using wrapper scripts um, that invoking directly Pegasus dust monitor uh, and passing uh, the interval argument um, and then adding our actual executable with the rest um, of the parameters. So, but still we need to have kickstar underscore monitor underscore URL uh, specified in our site catalog. So um, our final uh, monitoring tool is Darson. And uh, as I said, this is only for MPI jobs. So uh, Darson supports uh, two ways to be enabled. The first one, you have to recompile your tasks, your executables um with uh, Darson and link them statically or you can link them dynamically so in order to instruct the dynamic uh linking uh of uh your your jo your, your executables and uh the Darson library uh you need to specify the ld preload environmental variable uh under um the under your executables transformation catalog and this can be found on the top uh, right uh, example of a transformation catalog. Um, but then in order to get the actual statistics back, uh, you have to use a wrapper script that uh, as a post step will uh, create um, the absolute the absolute log uh, the absolute path of your of the Darson log uh, picked up by the environmental variables from for example, from the bot scheduler, and uh, it will invoke Pegasus Darson for each file, um, that it will output uh, the actual JSON um, statistics to the SMD out of your job. So um, Pegasus Darson, uh, as I said, will output the SDD out, uh, in, in SDD out a monitoring payload uh, that will be picked up by Pegasus Monitor D later on. So uh, you can see an example of this payload on the right of this uh, slide. Uh, and um, this approach can be used uh, as a generic way of adding new tools to this architecture and having uh, the monitoring payloads uh, being um, published to the to a stampede, sorry, to an MQP endpoint that uses the stampede um, uh, index to store that. So uh, let me give you a quick demo of uh, how you can deploy this. <clears throat> First of all, you have to clone the data collection uh, arc. Uh, sorry, the data collection arc. Um, a repository that we have on the Panorama 360 uh, GitHub page. Uh, and I've already uh, have it uh, on my machine. So on my machine, I've already configured uh, Docker and Docker Compose. Um, so basically what I have to do is invoke Docker Compose app and I can either demonize or not demonize this process. So if I don't demonize this process, I will just get back uh, the logs from the containers. And this is useful um, for debugging. Let me stop this. By running Docker Compose down, uh, Docker Compose will destroy all the containers and remove them from um, Docker processes. So let's bring up the containers in uh, demonized mode.
and we see we Docker Compose creates uh, the Elasticsearch, RapidMQ, Kibana, and Logstas, and all of the containers uh, communicate with each other internally. Uh, but also you can check your services uh, from the host machine. So if I was localhost 15.672 and use password panorama and username panorama, I can access the RabbitMQ that is just spawned by Docker. And I can also access Bana. Elasticsearch and Logstas. So all these ports uh, are exposed to the um, to the external traffic, and uh, by do that, by doing that, you, we have access to them via our uh, execution infrastructure. So for this example, uh, I have set up uh, an exogenic cluster with four nodes and one master uh, uh, node, which acts as a submit node as well. Um, so let's connect to the cluster. Um, so I will use the thousand genome workflow to demonstrate this. So first of all, here, um, the thousand genome is not an, uh, it doesn't contain any MPI jobs. So from this workflow, we cannot collect uh, their statistics, uh, but we can collect everything else. So for the Stampede uh, events, uh, what we have to do here is access the Pegasus properties file and add the monitor D events uh, instructions. So enable the encoding of monitor D to JSON, Set our MQP URL, which in my case is going to be uh, my machine, and also the MQP events I want to collect, which uh, the, the dot asterisk specifies everything. Uh, then we have to enable uh, Pegasus Kickstart to retrieve online traces, and we're doing that by adding the grid start. Uh, dot arguments uh, in in uh, dash m and then the interval which is dash m10 and also specify the kickstar underscore monitor URL which in my case again it's going to be my machine and uh, next we have to specify um, the Pegasus AMQP URL uh, and also the Pegasus uh, transfer publish uh, variable. So the Pegasus transfer will collect uh, data from Globus and publish them. So um, we're creating our uh, DAX uh, as, as, as usual by using the DAX script. And then our Plan underscore DAX is a regular uh, cell script that wraps Pegasus plan. There's nothing, um, there's nothing specific to this one. Let me just do plan in our uh, DAX file, and the, the workflow uh, will start running. So let's monitor the workflow. So on our left here, uh, we can see that RabbitMQ already received uh, some events from MonitorD, and they were consumed by Logstat. So the spike here uh, means that we received events, and the queued events are zero, which means that they're, they're already consumed. Go to the Kibana uh, endpoint that you just created with Docker. On the Panorama plugin, you'll find a new workflow that has just started running. And uh, you can observe that we have a bug here with my expan, and that's because um, of a mismatch um, 
between the monitor D timestamp and the actual timestamp time reported by Kibana. So uh, the one is millis and the other one is a second. But when the workflow finishes, this is fixed. And you'll be able to see the actual next span of your workflow. Um, so on our left here, we have the DAG that um, it, get, it gets updated uh, every time uh, a new job is finished. So the transfer jobs are done uh, and the compute jobs have started running. As you can see here, we have 16 compute jobs running. And these compute jobs uh, have been marked uh, as green. And as they run, you can access them and, and see the reported uh, statistics back. So we don't have statistics yet for this job, but let's wait for a while. So here we have our first statistics reported back, and we cannot, we still cannot calculate the CPU utilization with a, because we have very few data. Uh, as we accumulate data for this job, uh, as it progresses, we will update uh, the rest of uh, um, the visualization tabs. And um, you can also see data for the entire workflow. Uh, and as you can see here, as the workflow progressed, uh, we have progresses, we, uh, we update the data read and written by, the, by all the tasks. Uh, that includes the Pegasus, uh, that includes the transfer tax, tasks and also um, the compute tasks. On the discovery tab here, uh, you can see that we have new events uh, coming in and, and new uh, documents uh, uh, inserted into Elasticsearch. And uh, you can access all um, the indexes, finding uh, kickstart logs and transfer logs as the workflow progresses. <clears throat> So um, this concludes this uh, presentation uh, and you can find more uh, on our GitHub page, github.com slash panorama360 and also our website, panorama360.github.io. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer, uh, answer them. Um, also, feel free to uh, send any questions you have uh, on our uh, on our user mailing list and uh, or our support uh, mailing list. Thank you.